Welcome to another great episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So today is an interesting topic, a knowing whether or not do we really need an upgrade for our machines. So stick around. Before we begin, go ahead and hit that bell button so you get notified for future releases. Is this going to be the next baseline for all games worldwide going forward after developing post Microsoft Flight Simulator? It's a question to go ahead and think for oneself before they develop a game like this in the future. I think weather is one of the main factors in this game because the way the aircraft behaves in all weather systems was quite phenomenal. You can absolutely feel the different points at which the aircraft is hit by wind, etc. So that it affects the section of the aircraft where it's exactly supposed to. We've all seen fantastic trailers over the months for Microsoft Flight Simulator. However, have we thought about one fact that all the trailers are 4K? And we would pretty much be setting up our machines on either a 1080p or a 1440p display. Have you ever thought about that? So these are some of the little things that need to be considered when we intend to play this game with a fully fledged system rather. For some people, this certainly could be a big thing or not. We all should know for a fact that flight sims are quite heavy, mostly because calculating so many aerodynamics is really not an easy task for a CPU to calculate. It needs to do a lot of work. Of course, all the current mainstream sims, for example, the X-Plane and the P3D are based on pretty much old engines. So there could probably be a lot of optimization required to make them work smooth. It's pretty much standard practice where shooter players talk about having at least 120 frames per second. Rather, we simmers want at least 30 frames per second including a solid 60 frames per second would really be great but i don't want it to come to a cost of having less accurate flight models there are certainly a lot of flight dynamics involved talking about consoles some of the xbox one owners wonder if the performance of this game would rather be the same in comparison to the PC. It's not as simple to compare a PC with an Xbox One with their particular specifications. Something interesting to find out is that the rendering engine of the sim is basically adapted from a Sobo. It was previously a propriety engine from the game called Fuel. This game was actually released a few years ago and it featured pretty much the largest generated gameplay area on any console game. So it's definitely completely different as a game. Another aspect to talk about this game are the sounds. Imagine yourself when you can clearly hear the dimensions of rain hitting your aircraft at different points of the aircraft. And a mixture of sounds together, for example, the glass as well as the aluminum surfaces have different pitches and this is quite distinctive. So this makes the game more realistic with the vision that includes an amazing feature with ray tracing and the sound.
Another interesting thing I would really think is who could really fly in a VR? Something else that could also pop in someone's mind would be if or not a VR capability is possible. Well, we'll hope for that because that's going to be an exciting piece to experience. The head of Microsoft Flight Simulation, George Newman, also was supporting VR right away. However, there's really not much of a commitment at this moment. Sometime soon in the future. The development side is always interesting because Azobo's InDesign engine will always investigate the flight simulation protocols and ensure that the high definition 3D picture composites the real weather conditions. It's going to analyze the maps and pro react with and affect the game mode instantly. The game can be played solely or even in a team, which makes it much more interesting. While the visuals are impressive with artificial intelligence and satellite imagery, one should always believe that to get these ideal results, the simulator should require a much more updated specs. At a minimum, the simulator should at least require an AMD Ryzen 3 1200 or an Intel i5-4460 CPU coupled with a Radeon RX 570 or an NVIDIA GTX 770 GPU along with a 2 GB of VRAM, 8 GB of RAM and a 150 GB hard drive with a 5 Mbps connection. Although these specs are fairly reasonable, there is another possibility that they really will not deliver these realistic graphics according to Microsoft. Now this is really not something to worry, I hope. Based on the alpha testers and the images as well as the videos, the game should deliver a great experience. Would this consume a lot of data? It could probably consume a lot of data due to the fact that the highest quality scenery stream is going to saturate a 50 Mbps connection. That's pretty much like playing three 4K streams simultaneously the entire time you would be flying. Now that's a lot of data. Imagine a four hour flight would stream about 100 gigabytes of data. Have you ever imagined that? So for people who fly several times a week, would be doing around one to two TB a month, of course. I believe it should be an initial investment of downloading all this data and just updating periodically on any changes to the airports if in case they may apply. We should rather consider this a decent set of requirements for such a big simulator game, in all honesty. In my opinion, I did expect a huge VRAM and CPU requirements. All this is too good to be true. While streaming might be a concern, we should also consider Microsoft's xCloud game streaming service for Windows PCs. That could just be a game changer for all of us. Recently, Microsoft has started testing its Project X Cloud game streaming service for Windows 10 PCs this week. So I think there should be some hope rather, because the software giant is making a preview version soon, which is going to let you stream Xbox game to the PC, and it's all available to Microsoft employees, of course. So it's developed an Xbox game streaming app for Windows 10 that's going to be available in the Windows Store. It's much like the Android or the iOS versions where the app would require 
a Bluetooth Xbox One controller, a Microsoft account, of course, and a good internet connection. The PC app is also going to support streaming games from an Xbox One console locally or remotely instead of using Microsoft's xCloud server blades. Currently, the internal preview of this app run by the employees of Microsoft, the team rather, is running at 720 pixels resolution with a 1080p just around the corner. I believe that the experience is quite similar to what is available on the Android or the iOS, even down to the user interface, as long as you can access and stream those games. Microsoft recently upgraded its xCloud server blades to include 8 Xbox One consoles in a single server instance. That's quite a lot from up 4 as the company was using previously. It should shortly launch xCloud this year with PS4 controller support and Windows 10 streaming on the way. It's gradually, slowly rolling out this project xCloud all across the world, including countries like Germany, Italy, France, recently joining the lineup. While xCloud for PC could be huge, in my opinion, it still would harbor many questions in the minds of the users. As we all know, it could probably be coupled with Xbox Game Pass as we have no idea if that could include an additional fee on top of the existing price tiers. I certainly hope that the xCloud is to make all the games accessible that includes the Microsoft Flight Simulator where they can access via internet on any or every connected device. So hopefully this would solve pretty much any hardware requirement issues. Imagine if you could play on a 4K resolution on your old GTX 900 series or even on your TV. I think any user could gladly pay 10 or 20 dollars a month for an experience like Microsoft Flight Simulator. Well that's it for now, hope to see you soon guys. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more upcoming updates. Thank you so much for watching.